Hi, how's it going folks? It's me, Tabo, and yeah, welcome to another session. Um, this is going to be a rough one. I'm just basically doing a quick run through of uh, everything that I've done. This is just the process that I'm sharing with you. You know, it's nothing formal really. I just thought, why not kind of do it this way anyway? You know what I mean? While I'm exploring, I can just share my findings with you and um, kind of look at some of the challenges that I've had before. And now I'm trying to understand why things worked out the way that they did. So the last post that I made was with this image over here, which was inspired by Resident Evil. So I just wanted to see if I can replicate that. Uh, it's rough, but close enough. So I wanted to see if I could actually transfer that to the 3JS. And so I did. And this is what the 3JS version looks like. Now, as you can see, there's quite a bit of a difference, you see. And this is what I'm in a way still trying to figure out because there are a lot of different things that I didn't understand or had to figure out as to why is it that it looks this way. So looking at the code here, these are some of the things that I had to do or kind of test out to figure out how to best uh, get it to look correct. So I'm just going to start with a few things like for instance the, the renderer, the physically correct lights, right? When I turn this off, this is the result that I get. I get a very blown out version of this, okay? This is what it looks like and it just overall looks terrible. Nothing like this at all. And one other thing that I did which kind of uh, helped a little bit is adding the hemisphere light. Without the hemisphere light, I'm just gonna switch back the physically correct lights on. See, this is the result that I had, okay? Once again, very different from this. So this was kind of a cheat that I ended up uh, doing just so that I could get something close to the original render that I made. So this actually helps a lot when I add the hemisphere light then I get to at least uh, illuminate these parts so that it's somewhat closer to this even though it's not quite. So then I will switch it back on. Okay so there we go. So one of the things that I did was also to using tone mapping right but it depends on whether you're actually using tone mapping. If you have no tone mapping then this value over here does not really make any difference. It only works if you've got tone mapping. Like for instance, I'm gonna use, let's say Asus Filmic, right? Let's say Asus Filmic and then I come back here. There is a difference. You probably might not notice it much, but you see this is, it's a lot brighter than it was before. And to emphasize it even more, I will change that value. So now you can see it like it's really blowing it out. If I make it one, then you can see, right? So from this, so that, that's a big difference. So if you're using uh, tone mapping, then that helps. Uh, well, in my previous scene, I was not using any tone mapping, so it makes it a bit darker usually. Another one that you can use is uh, the Reinhardt, say Reinhardt mapping. Like I said, it's just different variations of lighting really, you know. So you can choose which one works for you and um, yeah, stick to that. Now if you come over here to the docs for 3JS, if you go to WebGL Renderer, then you can see the different tone mapping options that you have. You've got Linear Tone Mapping, Ryan Reinhardt Tone Mapping, Sinian Tone Mapping, Asus Filmic, I think actually I had spelled it wrong, even though something did happen. So we can try um, like Linear, even though I got a warning that this is not supported. But let's just do it. So linear Tone Mapping. Okay, so there's our Linear Tone Mapping. Let me see if I do get a a warning again okay well i guess that must have been because i misspelled it so yeah this is pretty much um the things that you will get so if you compare this one with that still difference you know but you can say not too bad not too bad it's something that you can work with and especially with bumping up the tone mapping exposure a little bit then that helps if we turn it down then this is what we would get you see this is a very dull version of it there we go so this is the view that i captured and for those of you that are wondering if this is actually for real yes this is a 3js version uh, at the moment there's no panning or anything like that because I do not have the orbit controls activated. Reason being because when I turn on orbit controls then it messes up the orientation because it focuses on the center of the scene. So now it's just gonna move the camera and move it downwards. But just for the sake of illustration, I'll just switch it on. You see, so now it's at the feet, so I just have to kind of pull it up this way and then change. So yeah, this is kind of what we have going here. But you see, it's all 3JS, nothing else. So I just created a plane in the background 
just so that you know I can mimic what I created over there. I actually had other way I wanted to create a spotlight and project it but then I realized that yeah why am I even doing that that's like a lot of unnecessary work I can just put a texture on it. I was trying to be fancy for whatever reason and I also thought maybe I could also animate the plane just so that um, it could look like there's some kind of movement in the cloud you know. I actually still wanted to try that out, it's just that I wanted to just kind of make this video anyway, it's just so that I don't end up spending an entire day just tweaking small things and not even, you know, making the video than it did because I just wanted to make a quick follow up uh, to everything because the last time I posted a video which was mainly just the a blender workflow, so I wanted to show you what the whole point was. But yeah, um, because also most of the time the things that i've created have been mainly focused on like the technical aspect of 3js but now i just want to try something else you know bring more of the 3d design aspect to it uh, cool textures cool um, materials and things like that so we'll see uh, how far it's going to go so this is just kind of like uh, something that i started and hopefully i can follow through with a lot more of these and still keep it technical, still try to break down uh, a lot of the technical things about 3JS that you will usually not find anywhere because most of the tutorials that you get out there, they're pretty basic, you know what I mean? You try to create shapes and all of these things, but 3JS is like so big, it's like such a big library that there's so much in it that is untouched and if you're new to it then yeah you probably just find it hard to wrap your head around it so that's what i want to do you know my discoveries will be your discoveries and i will share them as i go um so let me look uh, i don't know if there's anything i just want to make sure that i didn't miss out on anything that i just might also touch on okay another thing that i wanted to mention yeah this is also one of one important aspect with the renderer the output encoding now this made a huge difference in just how things look from the onset when you open a gltf scene from blender in 3js now i'm going to turn this off um, so that you can see what that does yeah if you don't turn on srgb encoding this is what you get and i think this is yeah definitely something that i've experienced before and the problem is that i think at first when i experienced this then i went and tweaked the lighting and then kind of like redid the lighting just specially for 3js but that doesn't make sense you know what i mean it's not like a reliable workflow if you're creating assets and uh, lighting you're sure that the lighting looks good in blender or whatever software you're using you just want to know that when you bring it here it's gonna look the same so this is what i got and yeah, anybody can agree that that looks horrible so yeah that makes a huge huge difference so the output encoding yes that is something to check out okay so that's yeah one thing that i needed to mention i almost forgot about that but i think that that was pretty much it um this has been something that has been bugging me to find out how i can really transfer my 3d work directly to 3js without losing a lot of the quality so this is only a start i'm sure i will find out more information and find out how i can also improve on this but yeah uh, without saying too much with all that said love and peace i'm out